video, we're going to be talking about at hibernation. And I know I've done like a lot of videos on this already, but this is kind of like the guide, the full guide on how to hibernate your ants properly. I'll be talking about where to hibernate them, what temperature you need, and what maintenance they'll need during hibernation, and a lot more. Like, I'll, this is an inclusive guide, so it will be kind of a long video, but hopefully I'll be able to fit in all the information you guys need into it. Alright, let's get started. So first of all, we want to see if you really need to hibernate your ants, because in some regions, ants actually don't hibernate. So the first thing to look out for is if your like ground where you live will freeze over during the winter. For example, this is my garden right now, and I know the picture looks really nice, but it's so freezing cold. Um, anyways, if the ground will freeze over, if like there's ice, if there's snow, then that means all the wild ants would be hibernating. And that means you should hibernate your ants too. But if you live somewhere tropical, where even during like all year round, there's never any snow, never like never drops below freezing, well then you do, probably don't need to hibernate your ants. Like your ants will probably, will probably be fine, like not hibernating because they weren't in the wild. Now, once you've made sure that your ants do actually need to hibernate, let's talk about how. where you're going to hibernate your ants. Well, basically, any room where the temperature gets below 10 degrees is fine. And, for example, any room that's not insulated and that's not, like, heated, for example, this garage, would be fine. It's also really preferable if they're in a location that doesn't get too much traffic. So, like, somewhere you don't really go to often. Because if it is somewhere where they'd be moved around a lot, then the ants could get disturbed and not hibernate properly. The most common location where ants are hibernated is in the fridge. And that's actually where I'm hibernating mine right now. So once you've found a location that you suspect will have the right temperatures, you should probably check it with a thermometer, and that's what I'll cover in the next section. So once you've found a location that you suspect will have the right temperatures, you should probably check it with a thermometer, and that's what I'll cover in the next section. So, the ideal temperature range for ant hibernation is between 2 to 10 degrees Celsius. For all the Americans out there, that's between 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 36 degrees Fahrenheit. So to measure this temperature, you're going to want to use a thermometer. And it doesn't matter if it's a traditional one or one of the, like, the laser pointer ones. As long as it works and it's reliable, then it's fine. Alright, so... I forgot to mention this during the earlier section of this video, but you also want to choose a location that has a stable temperature, one that doesn't spike or like plummet really suddenly, because that can, you know, if it's 5 degrees at one point and it suddenly becomes, you know, 30 degrees Celsius, well then, you know, that could be really dangerous for your ants. With that being said, as you can see, I tested the temperature in my fridge and it is roughly 9 degrees Celsius, and that is perfectly acceptable. Now let's talk about maintenance and what you need to do to take care of your ants during this hibernation time. Maintaining your ant colonies during like, the winter months during hibernation is so much easier than during the summer months, but there is still a little bit of maintenance involved. Now, while your ants don't need any food at all, because as long as you kept them well fed during the summer and all their gasters are full of honey, etc., then all they need is water. And since they lose moisture much slower in colder temperatures, then you only need to add moisture once every four or five days. And this is only if they're in a formicarium. If they're in a test tube with like wet cotton, then you don't need to add any moisture at all, because they already have it, you know, in the cotton. And I also give all my colonies formicariums one test tube in the outworld um, of their formicarium. So, you know, just in case I forget to water them or whatever, they still have a source of water. Now, when watering during hibernation, you really need to be careful not to drown any brood or ants, because since they're super sluggish, they'll likely drown much easier, because they won't be able to respond. Now, you want to do all this quickly so they don't completely wake up out of hibernation, but you also want to wait a little while every time you do this, and just make sure the ants are still alive. Now, if they're rolled up in a ball or whatever, that usually isn't any reason to worry, because, you know, that's how they hibernate, in a curled up ball. As long as you see some twitching parts, that means they're still alive and just sleeping. However, if they remain motionless for like a minute after you take them out of hibernation, then that's a cause for worry, and you should try to revive them. And I will make a video on how to deal with uh, dead, quote-unquote, ants during hibernation, but uh, 
that that's for a later video. This video is long enough already. And also, if you have a form carrion with like an instant hydration system, like a water tower from Tar Heel Ants, and as long as you can make sure they have some source of water during the winter months, then you don't even have to like moisten them, at, moisten the form carrion at all. Like really, maintenance during the winter months is very very simple. Maintenance for ant colonies in a test tube is even simpler. All I do is, if I see that the cotton is dry, like in this case, then what I do is I take out the uh, cotton, like the, from the plug, the cotton plug on the outside of the tube, and I'll just moisten it and stick it back in. And as long as you do this kind of checkup every five days, you know, with additional moisture and also like checking to see that your ants are still alive and well, well then there's, that's all there is to hibernation. It is one of the more complicated parts of ant keeping, but it is still pretty simple. And even if it's your first year, you should be able to pull it off relatively easily. Now, I have already made a video on why you need to hibernate your ants. Like, some people aren't convinced that it's necessary, but it absolutely is, in my opinion. And I have made a video on that, so I put a link in the description if you want to watch that. And I've made many videos on hibernation already. This will probably be the last one. I'll maybe make one or two more related to hibernation this year. And, yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed, and that's the end of this little tutorial. Alright, okay, so thank once again, thank you all for watching. And if you found this video useful, or enjoyed it in any way, then hopefully you subscribe and leave a like down below. I really appreciate the support. And uh, also, I have made many um, other hibernation videos, so make sure to check those out. To sum this video up, you need to hibernate your ants between 2 to 10 degrees Celsius in a place in a location with a stable temperature, and check on them every 5 days to apply moisture and check to see they're still alive. Alright, bye!